Well, I kind of felt like I was attached to my hair, you know? I felt like if I cut my hair, um, uh, removing a part of who I am, like, I was yeah. very, like, almost religious to my hair. Hello, good people. I hope you guys are ready for this one because I am super ready. Look at the glow. Today, I will be talking to Kata Zambombi. She's a YouTuber. The first time I met her, like not met, met, knew her content was 2019. She was still doing natural hair. And now she has changed it up. There's a lot of exercising, a lot of um, healthy eating and all those other things. So yo, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to talk to her. You've dealt with a lot of skin problems. How did you get it right? And how was your journey with your skin? Like, what product works for you? My skin journey has been very long, if I'm being honest, because it started in high school around the age of 15, and it's straight to until I was 21 years old. And that really works so bad with your confidence. So yeah, yeah, in yeah. high school, I didn't feel like I was the only one because I also noticed my peers getting acne. But mine was really extreme because I had a lot of a lot of acne on my forehead and oh, yeah. how i dealt with that at the time was this uh product called clean and clear it didn't really work uh to clean out or clear out the acne but it kind of helped with just making sure that my skin was clean and i just was strong if i can call it that i just told myself that there's gonna come a point in my life where the acne will go away and I consulted with a lot of doctors. I went to my general practitioner at the time and he gave me this product called um, Acnetane. It's oh, a yeah, pink yeah. tablet and it really helped clear out the acne on my forehead and I also had a lot of acne on my back. I don't know if anybody has this problem, but I get acne on my back, I had acne on my chest and it really cleared it out for about two years. So from 15 to 17, I had acne, it was really bad and then it was fine. So when I started working again at the age of 21, the acne just came back. And what contributed to this was also the kind of food I was eating. I loved eating a lot of food with sweets. I was always around like just unhealthy, very sweet, overly processed foods. And I had to kind of learn how to adjust uh, to that. So I went back to the doctor and I asked for the acne tank because at a certain point it did work. So I was on the treatment for about six months and it completely cleared my acne. And that's when I started incorporating skincare because oh, yeah. I wanted to get out of using pills and then also still sustain a good skincare routine. So I started using acne tank. Uh, just to clear out the skin and then with my skincare products I use clean and clear uh, they have this really nice like daily scrub and then oh, nice. during the same time I discovered Benzederm because that is like skincare products that help with uh, acne prone skin and it really helped to control like the way my skin feels and obviously um, the the products that help with like making my skin feel moisturized and not dry and all of that. I'm glad uh, the acne is gone. You don't have to worry and cover it up with a lot of makeup. Yes. 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 So yes. I I'm up. really glad it's gone. It really helps to like have a good skincare routine because it helps with your confidence as well. Because like when you don't feel good on the outside, it really affects the way you interact with people and yeah. just your overall self-esteem. So getting a good skincare routine can really help you with um, just your confidence as a start. <laughs> if you are feeling a little bit down, yeah. There's a question from Ken. So here she was asking, what face mask would you recommend? I can say I'm in between brands, between like Yours Beauty, which I have used in the past. And right now I'm just using a new brand called Curate. It's 25 Rand at 
I click, I do exfoliating three times a week because I know that's like a question that everybody asks, like how often do you exfoliate? So I try to exfoliate three times yes. a week and then after every exfoliating, I put on a sheet mask. How would you describe your so, hair journey? I would describe my hair journey as self-discovering because I started my hair journey at a point where I didn't know anything about hair. Uh, at the time, there wasn't as much content as we have now, and I also didn't know, uh, or I didn't find a person who had similar hair texture as mine. Like, there were ladies who had type 4 hair, but not a similar texture to mine. So, also, there was a lot of things that I couldn't find on the internet in terms of hair. So, I had to learn as I teach at the same time. And Ooh, yeah. there was a lot of things that I learned about myself. And there's a lot of things that I learned about the community as a whole. And I also got an opportunity to teach. So it was a lot of self-discovery, which was really great in the growth of myself as a person. Yes. I learned a lot about myself. So now that I cut my hair, I'm going to implement what I've learned when I did have hair and then I'll incorporate it now so that I can have more healthy hair and obviously my audience that I've built over a period of time also get to see uh, the growth with me even though I'm not like making a lot of hair videos at the moment but like I'm just giving myself some time to also learn different things yeah well while we wait for the hair to grow <laughs> how long does it take for you to grow your hair if you were to estimate do you remember how long it takes uh, that's such an interesting question so I think uh, naturally everybody's hair grows about a quarter like a month a little teeny weeny bit every single month it obviously has a lot to do with a lot of things for example genetics your hair routine how well you retain your hair while you're working on it you want to make sure that you're uh, detangling your hair very nicely so that you can retain that little hair growth that you have grown in that particular month so right now my hair is three months old I had a big chop in December the 27th and today's the 19th. So I'm headed towards um, four months. I also just want to mention that my hair is not falling off when I'm combing it. I haven't like noticed any hair falling off. So um, it really has a lot to do with how you treat your hair. So genetics, your hair routine, uh, like I said, hair retention is very important. And uh, <laughs> hair hydration. So yeah, it has a lot of uh, qualities. Why did you decide to cut your hair and all those other things? I know there's a video on your YouTube, so I'm going to put the pop-up here, yes, but yes. please tell me. I was at a point where my natural hair was not at its healthiest point. I got to learn a lot of things about my hair. I also got an opportunity to teach and also just learn from everybody in our community, the natural hair community. So the decision to cut my hair was actually coming to a point uh that made me realize well i kind of felt like i was attached to my hair you know i felt like if i cut my hair um um uh, removing a part of who i am like i was yeah. very like almost religious to my hair so i wanted to remove that and kind of change my mentality around hair i also just felt like my audience kind of got tired of the same old wash day routine like no offense but i wanted to explore as well what or who decides what you eat like you eat a lot of healthy food so today i'm currently at home in Senin, and uh who's in control of my menu for the whole week is my mom so today we had fish and chips which was really great and i enjoyed eating my mom's food but when i'm in midrand it is me who's making all the decisions i'm the chef in the kitchen so a lot of things that are <laughs> made me decide what i need to eat is my appetite uh which time of the month i'm in because you know when i'm on my period like my appetite is just yeah, yeah. so there's certain things that i eat during my period and uh during the week i like to just be consistent with the kind of foods that i'm eating because i'm going to gym so it just really integrates to uh where in the month i am how busy is my schedule because if i'm really busy at work i'll be honest i can forget to eat so 
I think the environment, the day, I also just allow myself and my body to tell me what it wants. I don't really like to be in a strict eating diet type of thing. No, like it's just how my body feels. And right now it doesn't really matter because I'm home. So I'm going to eat what my mom makes. <laughs> you, you got monetar- monetized uh, a while Yay. ago. How, yes. that, how did it feel and when did that happen and how are the brand deals coming along? So I started working with brands uh, long before I got monetized on YouTube. So I learned about YouTube monetization very late in my natural hair uh, time and also when I started my channel. So finding out like mid like mid season that day's monetization, I was just like really shook it. So I started working towards that. But I had already started working with brands that I love. Uh, please just give me two seconds. When I got monetized, I was very happy because I just felt like all the hard work that I had put in prior was being recognized and there was a sense of uh, like reward and that there's definitely potential for this to become more of a business. So I was really happy about that. The money is still um, obviously in its small uh, amounts, but definitely is potential. So I'm really, really happy about that. If I'm being honest, that money does make a difference. You're always consistent on YouTube and you have a nine to five job. How do you manage, mm. Joe? How, how do you, because that's like the hardest thing ever. I don't, I don't work at nine to five, but I, I'm not consistent. <laughs> but I think I'm, I'm the laziest person ever these days. So how do you manage? Yes. So how I managed when I was still just doing natural hair content was that I would reserve my weekends to film content uh, because at the time, if I had like a full wash day, um, day, I would maybe start in the morning with doing a wash day video. And then in the afternoon, I would do a uh, like moisturizing video. I would just change my shirt and maybe just change my earrings and maybe even sometimes the position of where I'm sitting so it can look like a different day. So that is just basically like bulk recording. And I dedicated a lot of of my weekends when I started um, because I just needed to find time because we were going to work in the office before COVID hit. And then when COVID started, uh, the company that I'm working at, we are still working from home. So the transition has been really interesting working from home full time and also just trying to find time to make content. So now I'm making a lot of like lifestyle videos uh, morning care, like morning routines, skincare videos, like still hair care and like what I do in my day. So I integrate my content creating in my day. So for example, oh, yes. if I want to make a morning routine video, I would obviously wake up as if I would on a normal day, but the only difference is that I've got my camera rolling. And sometimes I dedicate an hour during my lunch breaks or if I'm like in between meetings and I have maybe 45 minutes to an hour, I can just sit down and just make a video. But this all comes after planning. So I plan ahead to see what my week is going to look like. Uh, I know what my schedule is going to look like next week and I can just find those times in between uh, to make those videos. Other ways that I integrate, uh, ma- like making time for my videos is that I take the camera with me on the activities that I go along to because now I'm doing like more lifestyle. So for example, when I go to the gym, I just take my camera with me and we just roll from there. And obviously that's the content for the day. If I go grocery shopping, I just switch on the camera and just live my life. <laughs> How do you push yourself to go exercise? I know now you just talked about it uh, just briefly, but how do you push yourself? Because trust me, since COVID started, most people have neglected that. Some of us just know how to balance our bodies or else we'll be like huge people. So when COVID started, if I'm being honest, I was like everybody else. We were all home. We were eating a lot of food and, um, when I went back to Midrand this year, actually, uh, obviously because the gyms had opened, I realized yes. that the gym is just taking my money. 
every single month they're billing me and it's painful. So I decided to tell myself that I'm going to go to the gym and have my money's worth. I'm going to use every single like penny in that money that I'm paying. So at first I forced myself. Uh, it was a forcing kind of thing to say every day at this particular time, I'm going to go to gym, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what my mood is like, no matter how how bad my day was. And then uh, the second week of me going every single day, I started realizing that there are certain classes that I enjoyed. So now I start scheduling my gym session according to the classes that I enjoy, because now I look forward to going to the gym. It's not like I'm oh, yeah. forced. Do you have any advice for aspiring YouTubers or anyone who, wanna, who wants to who is on YouTube, but they're still small, you know? Like, yes. advice so, now. <laughs> I want to say, start with what you have. Um, don't necessarily feel the pressure to go and buy equipment. Uh, because what if you don't like it? What if you go out there and you buy this expensive equipment and you actually don't like YouTube? So I would advise maybe just start with what you have. Talk about topics that you are passionate about because it's very important in the long run because YouTube is, is, is like a marathon. You also need to be ready to constantly learn. Uh, sometimes it's just learning an editing software or learning maybe a topic that you are trying to share with us. Just be having the spirit of learning is really, really good and be very engaging with your audience. I appreciate um, the engagement that we are getting now on this live. It just means that actually Tim Zuzo is doing such a good job with engaging with you guys because that's what ultimately keeps people coming back and you're going to also grow your community on your channel. So engagement is very important, responding to people's comments and just appreciating uh, the effort that they actually sat down and, and watched your videos. It's very important. And to have fun. I mean, YouTube is about having fun and documenting your days, uh, yeah. things that you have learned as a person. So just have fun. The thing is, she left, yeah, but it was about the time where we were done. Uh, I, I get you still had a, a lot of questions, but you can ask her on her channel maybe or D, DM her on, on Instagram. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Kenzo, for interacting. Thank you to everyone who has been here, in and out, in and out. Uh, that's the most amazing thing. And thank you very much to Kataza. I'm not going to try to find her again because we were done, man. There was nothing else we would talk about. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys. Iswana, stay beautiful and be in love. Go create content. I'm just saying. Have fun. They hate it. Easy. Because they rejoice. That's people. They wish it.